Hi, welcome to part three of my video series looking at fitting a winch to a Freelander 2. In parts one and two of this video series, I fitted a Rhino 13,500 pound rated synthetic rope winch behind the grill on my Freelander 2. This is a 2009 XS diesel TD4 2.2 litre in part one of the video i removed the front bumper i removed the factory cross member and fitted a muddy mods winch mounting tray with the winch and then in part two i looked at cabling it up by fitting the relay module there's a, a box that has to be located next to the winch with cables that go along and connect to the motor those cables currently are just coiled up here but they need to find their way to the battery so there are a number of things that I still need to do to complete this project I need to refit my black plastic bumper surround that goes around the grill I had to leave that off before so that I could fit the fair lead I also need to relocate my number plate because this can't stay like that. That needs to hook down underneath and the rope would then be going across the number plate. I need to find a way to plug in the remote control. So the winch came with a wired remote control and also two wireless remote controls. I don't want to rely solely on the wireless ones. So I need a way of accessing the socket to plug the remote control in, which is down in there somewhere. I need to connect up this winch to the battery via a isolator switch because I don't want to leave it connected permanently. And then finally, I need to look at the free spool clutch handle. So you can see in there, if I can get that to focus, there is a metal handle on top of the winch and that has to be lifted to disengage the drive. So the manual says it's not a good idea to pull out the winch on the motor with the motor actually in reverse driving the rope out. You're meant to um, lift that handle and, and lock it off slightly uh, by, by turning it, lift that handle and then turn it to uh, lock it in the lifted position and then the, the drive is disconnected and the rope can be pulled out. Okay, um, then you re-engage the, the free spool and the winch can then pull the rope in on the motor. So I need to have a think about how to operate that handle with it hidden behind the grill. Okay, so um, I have seen some people do metal levers sort of sticking out here where they can kind of turn. Um, I would like to go for something a bit more advanced than that, uh, a motor or uh, or. Um, some other way of kind of lifting that up. So let's look at these different things one by one now. I've put all the different parts and things on the front of the car here. So I'm gonna talk about each of those things one by one in more detail, and then I will set about dealing with each of those additional pieces of work one by one so that this project is then complete and I can move on to something else. So let's start with this bumper surround. So why didn't I fit that back onto the car when I actually put the front end back on in part two of this video series? Well, the reason for that was because I thought this black bumper surround sat hard against the factory uh, bumper front factory front end of the car but it doesn't there is turn this over there are these kind of plastic standoffs here with these studs okay so it's this gap here that was going to cause the problem because these two would have to be removed because they were sitting sort of pretty much where the fair lead bolts needed to go that would then leave a gap between the bumper surround and the factory front end. If I then put the fair lead on the outside and tighten those bolts, it's going to crush 
the bumper surround in against the front of the car and I didn't want to just sort of leave the bolts loose or uh, not screwed in properly. So I had to make a, a decision because I was running out of time and I had to use the car the next day. So at the end of part two, I had to remove the bumper surround. It left these slightly unsightly holes, but there was nothing I could do about it. I just had to remove that, take that off, cable tie the, the parking sensors back into their original holes and refit my number plate um, just with some screws sort of high up like this. That then allowed me to bolt the fair lead hard on with the bolts that came with the, uh, I think these came with, with the Muddy Mods winch mount. Um, they may have come with the winch, I can't remember, but, um, but they were sort of long M8 bolts that uh, then screwed into the cylindrical spaces that sit immediately behind here. So what I need to do is I need to refit this, but before I do that, I need to cut these off. Okay, so I bought one of those multi-tool uh, oscillating saws, so I will cut that off. I need to cut a hole, a sort of letterbox hole in that bumper surround, similar to the hole that I cut in the factory bumper, okay? So previously I cut this one with a jigsaw, um, but I had a, somebody comment on my YouTube video saying, should have used a multi-tool? Okay, I didn't have a multi-tool, but I have now gone out and bought one, and I will use that on the bumper surround. I have heard that the multi-tool just is, is a little bit more um, sort of, uh, uh, gives a finer cut than, than a jigsaw. A jigsaw is just a little bit uh, a little bit savage to use on uh, on a plastic bumper like that. So I'll use the multi-tool, carefully cut the correct size hole in the front of there, and that can go on here. That still leaves me with a problem. This fair lead needs to go on the outside. So what am I going to do about the gap? Well, it just so happens that the thickness of a fair lead is exactly the same thickness as those black plastic standoffs there. I've actually gone and bought another fair lead. I'll hold that up now so you can have a look. There we go. So it's it's the same height. So what that means is that this one could actually stay in position. The bumper surround could go on and then I could just fit another fair lead on the outside, bolt the whole lot together, and problem solved. It's a slightly unusual way of fixing the problem, but the advantage of using two fair leads is I've then got protection, a metal surround, all the way in. Yes, there'll be two fair leads stacked up, but that is better than having a fair lead and then a gap with a sharp plastic edge that's going to catch on the rope. By using the two fair leads, we then have a nice smooth metal tunnel as such through the various front ends. So through here and then through another one and then through the factory bumper. Okay, so that's the plan there. So I'm actually going to um, modify that and stack up two fair leads, one outside, one on the inside of the bumper surround. That's the bumper surround. Um, what else? Okay, so, remote control. Okay, so here is the wired remote control. It comes with quite a long, quite a long wire. Um, it's a shame they didn't use a coiled wire, actually. They used a sort of straight wire. But it's about a good two metres long, probably, probably nearly three metres long, actually. Um, the idea is that it's long enough to not only allow you to stand well clear when winching, but also if you needed to, if you were on your own and you needed to try and drive whilst winding the winch, you could sort of send it all the way 
in through the window and actually hold that while driving the car. The problem there is that this plug, that goes into the side of, you can just see there, in there is the, the socket on the side of the solenoid box. Okay, so what do I do? Do I leave this plugged in all the time? Do I just run on the wireless remote control that come in with two of these? Um, they do work. Um, I've heard bad stories about wireless remotes for winches. People say, oh, yeah, they, they don't work. They get interference. Um, they're, they're just unreliable. Now, what I intend to do is use these, but not make it impossible to use this because if I do end up getting stuck somewhere and these decide to stop working or I'm next to a power pylon and there's a lot of interference it's stopping the radio signal from this then I will be reliant on this one so I need to find a way to connect this in semi-permanently I don't want the remote just sort of tied up in the engine bay with all this wire so my idea there is to actually cut this wire off open up these these screws on the remote control handset take this wire off put that plug in the side of the relay box so permanently plug that in and maybe sort of smear some sealant or something around there so that's permanently connected. This wire will then go off to either over here or over there, one side or the other, I don't know which yet, probably over here actually because it's the driver's side. And then I will put a panel mounted three pin connector. So this is an XLR, um, XLR type plug and socket. So I will connect this wire to this socket here and mount that somewhere in into this slam panel probably so mount that sort of up here somewhere so let's move that so if i mounted that say here then that could be wired in it comes with a little waterproof sort of dust cover rubber cover that could be sitting there with its cover on. And then I've got some coily wire here. Now this extends out to about two meters long. It's almost as long as this uncoiled one. It's, it's a little bit heavier gauge, but um, I think it, it'll work. It's just three pin, three, three core uh, coiled mains wire. And that could then connect, it could have this XLR plug on it. That plugs in to the socket. And then the wire can then be stretched out, either away from the car, or should I need to operate the winch whilst trying to drive at the same time, then I can just pull it in through the window. And this would then be opened up and rewired to use the, the coiled wire instead. So that's the plan for remote controls. What else have we got here? We'll come on to these things in a moment. Okay, that's all to do with the free spool. Here is battery isolator. Okay, so this is uh, one of those sort of key type battery cutoffs where you, you have a removable key and you just turn that. That is just turned 90 degrees, difficult with one hand. And that will then turn the connection on or off. Okay, so it's just a switch. A lot of racing cars or rally cars use these. They have them up on the scuttle panel. So if they are involved in an accident, then uh, one of the marshals can come out and disconnect the electrics. Uh, easily or uh, um, operate um, fire extinguishers or whatever they need to do. Um, 
I'm going to try and mount this one sort of somewhere, somewhere in the engine bay, I don't know yet, and connect the winch cables to that. I bought some nice um, rubber, uh, rubber sort of uh, boots, I think they're called, to, to go over the, the terminals, um, just because one of, well, one or both of these will be battery positive. Uh, when it's either disconnected or connected. So if that is sitting around here somewhere, I don't want anything metal touching that that is chassis earth, okay? So um, it's very important to, to isolate that. Now, unfortunately, these come as a pair, the red and the black. I really needed two red, actually, because this is this is not a battery terminals, red and black, plus and plus uh, plus minus or 12 volts zero volts this this is um, connecting a live feed so I'll probably just end up using the red on the permanently live one and then the black on the uh, the output so that's battery connectivity for the winch let's have a quick look now at the number plate now I, I just had to I had no choice but to just put this number plate back on um, in part two of this video series I reconnected uh, remounted that number plate just with a couple of holes drilled here with these sort of screw covers on just to make it legal but I don't want this to be like that that was uh, a, a very temporary way of just uh, securing the hook on there I, I found that if I wound the winch right in the hook still ha hung down across the number plate okay so I had to hook it up there but I don't want it to stay like that permanently so the other place that I want to connect this is underneath onto the towing eye under the car on uh, in the middle of the Mantec sump guard so because that is then going to go down it can't go across the number plate that would be illegal so the number plate has to move. So the plan I had was to put a square number plate here. So I went to Halfords and ordered a square number plate. A few days later they called me and I went and picked it up. I was very pleased with this number plate at first because it was the right size, the right shape, they would got the letters right, the numbers right, the spacing between the characters right, but there was one major problem with it. It's the wrong colour. They've given me a number plate for the rear of the car. In the UK, white on the front, yellow on the back. I clearly stated to the guy on the desk that I needed it for the front of a Land Rover because I fitted a winch. Something went wrong and they gave me a rear one. So I took it back and they then ordered in the correct colour. They had no use for the yellow one, so they let me keep that as well. I don't need it, but you never know, one day I might uh, uh, get a trailer or something like that, so I'll keep that. So this is the right colour and that needs to go somewhere like this. Now it's going to be a bit of a job mounting this because we've got the, uh, the fog light there, we've got parking sensors, uh, I think there are, oh there's the other one under there, so that one there will stick out through the bumper surround, so that needs to mount somehow like that, it, it's really the only place it can go, I have seen some people put their number plate up on their, up on their um, roof rack up the top, but the, the issue with that is this is sloping. This is sloping and the, the MOT rules are very clear. And that is that the number plate has to be vertical. Okay, so a lot of old classic cars, E-types and uh, caterums and that do have a sort of stick on number plate on the front. That is permitted in certain cases because there's nowhere else to put a number plate on vertically. On this car, I, I can't get away with it, really. Um, 
if the number plate was up the top and it wasn't vertical, I'd just be asking for trouble. So the number plate will have to go here. There is quite a large bit of space here, um, but I'm gonna have to make some kind of mount for it, okay? Um, the, the, the rules say that it, it should really be sort of face on like that, but you can, you, you can't bend the actual number plate in the middle, but you can mount it at a slight angle. So long as it is clearly readable by the police and speed cameras and AMPR and anything else that needs to read that, that is fine. Okay, so there are um, some Alfa Romeos and Evos and that, which have the number plate, a square number plate like that, sort of at the side at a very slight angle, okay? That is legal and I intend to do the same. So that's the number plate. Right, let's now have a look at the fair lead handle. So the handle is, is up in there. If I try to reach in, let's see if I can, it's very difficult to get to um, and it needs to be lifted. If I try and lift that, okay, so I'm gonna move this back round. You see that fell down. Okay, so it's got a spring that uh, drops it back down again. But when that handle drops, that engages this. Okay, so I can't pull that out. If I lift that and move it, that can now be pulled out. Okay, so that is free spooling. But I then need to click that back in to drop it back down. So there are a number of ideas that I came up with to motorize that. Before I fitted the winch, I thought wrongly that it just needed to be turned 90 degrees. Okay, so I actually thought it was a 90 degree engage, disengage. So I bought this, which is a 12 volt water valve for sort of central heating systems or something like that. And the idea was to take this off and the shaft that's coming out of the bottom will then turn 90 degrees depending on which way round you connect these wires. And I even bought a remote control module. So this has the motor and 12 volts, and then it comes with a little key fob. You can actually press, lock, unlock, and this would turn, turn. That was the plan. And then when I actually got the winch out of the box, I realized that it just needs lifting. It just needs lifting, it doesn't need to be turned. So I then looked at other options. Okay, so the simplest would be a non-motorized solution, just a lever. So we'd have a lever here. This is just a quick release uh, wheel wheel shaft for, for, a, for a bike. Um, but this cam arrangement here is such that as you turn that down, it lifts that very slightly so I could release and then lift. There are two problems with this. Um, in the engaged state that would be sticking up so I wouldn't be able to close the bonnet. And also directly above the handle comes out around here. So this is going to be visible all the time which is not ideal really. So I gave up with that idea. And then I bought one of these, which is a central locking motor. So this actually is a, a sort of motorized uh, rack and pinion kind of system, which will move in and out. So you connect the motor one way or the other, and it pulls that in and out. It's not very powerful, but if that was mounted above the handle, I think that would actually be strong enough to lift that handle. So I tried playing around with this, connecting it up and just seeing what sort of force it gave. Um, there was a 
problem with this, and that is that in order to lift that handle against the spring, this would have to be stalled and engaged. So it would have to be powered and the motor trying to turn and potentially overheating, burning out, uh, stripping the teeth or whatever else will happen with that. So because of that spring, it wasn't just a case of lift or lift up, push down. It's pulling up all the time whilst that free spool needs to be um, to, needs to be disengaged. So I thought about that and I thought I don't think that's really going to work. And then I had a, an idea. The handle on top of the shaft it actually has a little screw in the middle so that can be taken off it's aluminium okay so it's not going to be magnetic or not going to be attracted to a magnet but if i replace that handle with a sort of uh, mount like that and a steel disc i could then use one of these now this is one of those electromagnets that they use to keep um, building doors closed, office office doors, like fire doors, or um, any kind of door where you have like a swipe card or a key fob. It, it's, it's always a, an electromagnet that is holding it um, and that then releases and you can you can open the door and go in. The idea of that is that um, if there's a fire, fire alarm goes off, the magnets release and the doors can just be um, opened easily for people to get out. So could I possibly use an electromagnet in here to lift the shaft up slightly. It only needs to lift by about, about a millimetre or two. It's not very much. So if that piece of metal was very close to here, if that was mounted like that with this steel disc just underneath it, then I could engage this magnet, I could, I could connect up 12 volts and it will lift up, lift that up to lift the handle and disengage the free spool. That's my favourite idea. Okay, so it would need some kind of cradle to be 3D printed. I'm not sure if it will work or not, but I can try. I can try it. Worst case, if none of these ideas work, then I can actually get to that handle just by reaching in through the grill and just lift it slightly with my fingers and turn it a bit. And that is now free spooling. Okay, and then I just turn it to put it back. It's not that difficult, really. I thought it was going to be much more hidden and much more inaccessible. So I'll have a go at this. I'll have a go at this and see if I can get it to work. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to have to reach in through the grill. Okay, right. What I'm going to do this afternoon is fit this, the battery isolator switch. And I'm going to look at fitting these sockets and plug this this socket to here and then tomorrow I will remove the front end again and refit the bumper surround the front end has to come off in order to fit that because the nuts need to go on the other side of here once that's all done I can then look at mounting the number plate on the outside Okay, so the first thing I'm going to look at is the battery isolator switch, the winch isolator. So this is the switch, it's just a two terminal high current key operated switch. So that goes in and then turns to turn it on and then turns 90 degrees to turn it off and the key can be removed. So I thought about places to mount this. It could go here somewhere. It could possibly be put up here or 
here. It's one of those things that needs to be fairly close to the battery because I don't really want a permanently live cable sort of running all the way down the front. But also it needs to be securely mounted out of the way really. I don't want it just sort of dangling around down here or um, sort of loose up here. So I thought could possibly put it here. Um, the issue then is that it's going to probably get uh, quite a lot of rain and that on it there. I think the rain sort of goes down here, but um, I don't think I don't think the bonnet will will close properly with that there. Let's just let's just put the bonnet down a bit and just see how much room there is. Actually, quite a lot of room there. A lot of room there. So that is a place that it could go under there. I'm more than happy to have to lift the bonnet to turn the winch on, that's fine. I don't mind doing that because I'm gonna be connecting up the uh, the remote control socket probably over here somewhere uh, and I'll need to open the bonnet to connect that. That's okay. If I do ever need to sort of drive whilst operating the winch, then I just have to um, put the bonnet down a bit so I can see where I'm going. So, possible places okay so I could put that there I could also put it probably sort of somewhere like this now one thing I did notice is this hole here so if that is there this circular piece here would be underneath here you just have that sort of black cylinder poking up but there's not a lot of clearance here I mean that rubber bung there you can actually see the mark there where it presses so this area here is this area here and that comes up a bit there so so there's not much room between here and here but there is this hole here which is quite convenient because that actually lines up with this area here and underneath there there's a large gap. See under here you've got the headlight underneath so I'm not going to be able to get to those terminals but here there is quite a big sort of void underneath where I, I could easily put that if that went somewhere like that this piece here will go into there when the bonnet's shut and then I open the bonnet and stick the key and I'd need to remember to take the key out before slamming the bonnet shut but um, the wiring could then carefully come down and around and connect on with these protective boots on the terminals. And it's nicely out of the way then, the wiring is hidden. It, it's not anywhere where I'm going to knock a spanner onto, the, onto these terminals here, which one of which will be permanently live. Okay, so I, I don't really want it kind of over here where I'm gonna be using tools regularly. The problem with putting it up here is I want to fit my Webasto heater soon. Okay, so my Webasto is still sitting on its breadboard, still sitting there on my back seat. And that is on my list of projects to finish off. So that Webasto and possibly a little fuel tank needs to go somewhere. So it'll either go down in here or up there maybe the Webasto down here, the fuel tank there, or if I use the main fuel tank, the Webasto could probably mount in underneath there, because there is a big, big space under there. Okay, so I, I don't really want to put the battery switch there, okay, just, just because I want to kind of keep that void empty underneath there for things I'm doing with the Webasto, because if I do end up using a separate little fuel tank, then I'm gonna, probably bring the the fuel filler cap up through here okay so this is where I'm going to mount it okay the the actual location needs to be about 
there. I can't really use this hole, unfortunately. I need to make a new hole. Um, and it needs to be about there. Okay, so the terminals will hang down just behind the headlight. And if I close the bonnet, we'll see that that hole, that that goes, you can't really see it, but it there, it goes into that hole, okay? So that, that bit of plastic sticking up there just sits in here. So what I need to do is to make a fairly large hole in the metalwork here. Uh, that's probably about 20 millimeter diameter and a couple of extra holes, probably just two, two extra holes for a, a couple of bolts just to locate that in. That will then go in from underneath and then the key will be used here to turn the winch on and off. Okay, that's the plan. I just need to uh, get the hole saw out, get the drill out, start making that hole. And then I need to connect up these wires here. Now I've already um, soldered on a, a sort of a eyelet on the end there onto to each of these. So I'll need to re, redo that um, and make sure that the cables are not sort of being rubbed at all anywhere. Um, run them nice and neatly and carefully so that uh, uh, everything is nice and secure and protected. And then there'll be another piece of red. I've got a piece of red left over from the uh, the red cable that I used to um, to 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 do. Uh, this is the original red lead that came with the winch, but I've got some red cable left over from when I wired up the motor um, for the connections between the winch motor and the solenoid box. So what I need to do is make the hole, fit the switch, cut these cables down. I've got a couple of, uh, uh, a couple more of these eyelet things here, which are sort of crimp uh, or solder. I, I tend to sort of crimp them on a bit and then solder just for, just for, for good measure. And um, they will come up here. The black cable needs to find its way up to the negative terminal, which is that one at the back. So the black will probably probably come up round here. And yeah, I'll find a way. I'll find a way for it. Now I could actually just connect it to kind of chassis earth, um, but I think it would be better off going all the way to the negative terminal. Uh, and then the positive has a positive lead that will come down here, down here to the to the switch. Okay, and this one will then be connected to the other side of the switch. Right, let's get drilling and get this mounted. Okay, so what I've done, I've removed the headlight. I've marked up where I need to make a hole for this to fit through from underneath. I need to make sure that I'm not too near this edge here. And there's also on the back of the headlight, there is this uh, little tab, I think it's this this one or this one, one of the two, but that sticks out into the into the area around here. So I just need to make sure that that doesn't foul up on the, the contacts that are going to be hanging down below. So what I'm going to do is get my goggles on and use my cordless drill here with a 25 millimeter metal cutting hole cutter there with a a sort of um, pilot drill in the middle. Carefully drill down into here. I don't want steel filings going everywhere, so I'm going to try and hoover those up with the, uh, the vacuum cleaner. Whilst I do this, I'll put my phone on my tripod here, just so that you can see what I'm doing whilst I make this hole. I'll need both hands free, so I'll set the uh, set the phone recording of this this sort of area here. Right, let's get drilling.
Okay, so I've just turned that around so that the key goes forwards like that. Now, the bonnet doesn't close with it like that, but that's fine because that's in the off position. That can be taken out and put inside the car. But one thing that is good is if I ever do need to drive the car with the winch enabled, such as to drive myself out of deep mud uh, by operating the winch and driving at the same time, then I'll need to be able to see where I'm going. So I need to be able to close the bonnet. Now, I've just done a quick test closure. And that, that's shut. And just about see up in there that is actually shut with the key in position and uh, it's very difficult to see but the key is in there and the bonnet is closed okay so uh, so it's just good to know I, I don't intend to leave the winch powered like that but it, it's useful to know that I can use it like that if I need to okay so if I was doing some green laning where there was a high possibility of needing to use the winch I can just put that in turn it on and shut the bonnet okay but it, it is a bit of a close fit okay so one option would be to pop a couple of spacers underneath here um, so that, uh, let's just see if I can focus that, it's just too, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so I could put a couple of spacers in here, a couple of washers or something, just to move that down very slightly. Um, but um, there we go. So that is there now in position. The next thing to do is to cable it up. Okay, so I need to take these nuts off here and actually connect up the, the the red wire here needs to be cut shorter and connected up to the terminal here and then this one here needs another red cable connected to battery positive and then the black here goes straight up to battery negative so i'm going to dig out the spare red cable that i have left over from cabling up the winch and um and then uh, get this connected up, get the uh, get the cable cut down, solder on some new eyelets. Now this wire here is for my amber strobes, which that does need um, dealing with reconnecting. Just put that up there for now. I've put some tape on the end just to make it safe. So um, yeah, that just needs. I don't want that getting caught in the fan. You see, so. It needs to be kept safe. So I'll take these cable ties off here, they're reusable cable ties, and um, get this cable cut to the correct length. So that's now refitted there. I need to fit a couple of little spaces there just to lower that down a bit um, to get it sort of more flush with this um, so that the bonnet can definitely close with the key in the on position. Um, but just for now, that can be like that with that dust cover on there. I've cut the, the retaining ring off there because there just wasn't enough room for that to stack up on top of the, uh, the grommet, but that, that's fine. That sits on there quite nicely and then those cables can be just sort of carefully kind of cable tied up out of the way um, i can now refit the the positive onto the battery terminal a couple of other things that i need to do so i need to fit some sort of wiring cradle there's actually a hole in there so i'll fit a, a like a wiring cradle behind there for the um for the black and the red cable that feed the, the winch um, so where they go through there I'll just sort of attach them um, otherwise they're going to get trapped um, down alongside the catch can so sort of fit them about there and 
probably cable tie this here, but I just need to kind of put the headlight back in and make sure that the, um, the headlight uh, release rod can still connect on. Okay, so I'll put the headlight back in now. And then the next thing to do is the remote control. Okay, so take out this cable here. Actually thinking about it, I'll probably leave the headlight out for now because I think I can actually reach in here and plug in that remote into the side, um, the far side of the, uh, the, the relay box here. Um, actually do that without having to wait until I remove the front end. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll do that next. And then I'm gonna have a look at the bumper surround, take these lugs off there. Okay, so next I'm going to look at the remote control. Okay, so this is the wired remote control and it's got a long, straight, uncoiled cable on it. This is about two meters long. And I want to replace that with this coiled wire, which when uncoiled is a similar length, um, but it's just a lot neater. And it will also allow me to plug this in permanently into the side of the relay box there and then run that probably in this direction over to a socket okay so i've got a chassis mounted three pin socket here and put a socket somewhere here not sure yet the reason for putting it on this side is i could then if i wanted to if the wireless remote controls weren't working for whatever reason because they have become uh, faulty or the batteries have gone flat or something like that. I could then plug in the wired remote and take that in through the window of the car to allow me to drive and winch at the same time. If I put it over here next to the isolator, then it's just going to be too far away from the driver's seat. Okay, so this one had to go here because that was on the the root of the positive cable coming from the battery down to the winch. Okay, so that's there for a reason. And the uh, the remote control socket could go over here. It could even go in a sort of similar sort of position here. There's a huge great space underneath there. So that, that would be a good place for it. I do need to consider the bonnet closure. Okay, so I don't really want the socket to be visible with the bonnet shut and the car locked um, that was the, the reason really for hiding this here I have seen some people put that kind of here on the grill or here problem with that is you can't leave the key in there somebody's gonna take it away um, and it's just too too vulnerable to uh, people interfering with it okay so by putting that there it is then hidden by the locked and alarmed bonnet. Okay, so the only person who knows it's there uh, will be me and all of you viewers. Okay, so the remote control socket, I want to be similar, um, but I do want to be able to operate it with the bonnet shut. Now that's quite a tall plug, you see, so if that was plugged in here, the bonnet wouldn't be able to close. So I either need to put it sort of sideways so we can plug in like that um, into one of these bits of metal or it might be a good idea there's a big load of space underneath there um, I could actually put it into there um, so that it's sort of there and then you can just plug in and then run the wire uh, the cable if necessary can come in under this flap and then then out um, if, if I ever needed to, to operate it with the bonnet shut. Okay, so that, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. I'd have to run the wire all the way up and round, but it should be long enough. It should be long enough. This is, this is quite a long wire. So what I'll do is I'll take this apart, take the screws out, open it up, disconnect this wire, and just see, um, see how long it, it can stretch so I'll also need to just identify which cores inside here 
go to which pin so I'll do that with the meter when, when I've got this opened up okay otherwise I'll risk uh, wiring up the uh, the new connector in the wrong wrong pin out okay right let's get this apart and see what's inside So that's blue. Which is out. Okay, so that bottom pin there is goes uh, live when we are spooling out or uh, driving the winch out. And that's the blue wire. Brown. So brown is the centre, which is the common, and that's the one at the top. Okay. So the other one is black. So it's blue, brown, black. Blue for out, common, and in. Now that I've worked that out, I can disconnect this and uh, can actually cut this wire. So what I need to try and do is reach in and plug this onto the side of this box on the other side. And then once that's plugged in, I can then run the wire um, probably up over the radiator and along um, into the um, over to the other side of the engine bay. Okay, right. Okay, that was a bit fiddly, but it's uh, it's it's plugged in. Okay, so this wire now needs to be routed round over to the other side somehow. Okay, so what I've done here is run this cable all the way along here and then just round the corner here. The reason I've run it that way and not across here and in is I don't want it going across the top of the winch. I do already have the power cables going across the top but they're all cable tied down. I don't really want to add any more to that. Okay so this one can come round here with the other cables and then go neatly across the top of the, the radiator there um, with the, the bonnet release cable and also this here, which is a coolant balancing uh, pipe. So now I need to find a position for this panel mounting socket. Now, I've been having a bit of think about this and various ways of doing this sprang to mind. I could put it sort of here, or I could put it in here, or maybe on the scuttle up there, or in this, this panel sort of here. Originally, I wanted to put it in the engine bay somewhere so that it was out of the way and was hidden to avoid anybody messing around with it while the car is parked up. There is an issue with putting it in the engine bay though, and that is that if I do want to winch and drive at the same time, I've then got to try to plug it in, close the bonnet, and have the wire sort of going up through here somehow. So then I thought, well, do you know what? This is sitting there with its uh, dust cover on, it's not exactly uh, going to attract much attention. It's not like the big battery isolator switch with a big red handle on it, which stands out. This is just a little 
socket and worst case somebody goes oh what's that and pops it open it's just a socket they're not going to really do anything with it okay so i could put it down here somewhere so it's near the winch and then i can stand here with the remote control but the problem with that is that's too far away from the window okay so trying to winch and drive with it plugged in here is going to be difficult the wires can be doing a sharp turn so then i thought okay so i could put it over here somewhere on here getting it up over this firewall there's a sort of metal kind of uh, wall behind there to, to sort of protect uh, uh, the rest of the car should there be an engine fire um, i don't really want to drill through that so i'm then thinking well okay i'll bring it up here uh, I don't want to start hacking holes in the wing. Don't really want to put it on the side of the bonnet, even though I am going to be putting uh, some checker plate and things like that on the bonnet. Um, I'd rather not have a socket sticking up out of the bonnet. So then I had an idea. What about here? So I can run this wire here round in... There's a, a sort of... Um, a hole down in there which goes down to here this is not an, a real air intake it's just a fake air intake and as if by chance that would actually fit perfectly in that area that would fit really nicely in there this is plastic as well i think it's either plastic or thin metal but it would be very easy to make a hole there mount that in there on its side and um, that can have the, the dust cap on as well and then i can either plug in and stand here with the with the with the remote control or easily feed it in through the window so that's what i'm going to try and do so i'm going to take this out to get these vents out is fairly easy you just pull sharply at the bottom like that and that comes out okay so I've decided to remove this headlight because trying to get a wire into this void here is very very difficult that you, you can't go round here you can't really you can't go through these holes it's kind of up, up there, but the, the gaps are so tight. I just, I tried just poking this wire up there. It just would never kind of come out over here. It's very, very difficult to sort of feed a wire up. So what I've done is I've just gone, rescued one of my old amber strobes out of the dustbin fed that wire down there and it came out here which is uh, pretty much in the right vicinity so i've just, just taped that there now i'm gonna carefully see if i can Okay, that's how I do it. I'll pull some slack through before. Yeah. Just there. I don't really want it pulled too tight. There's plenty of cable to play with. I've just routed that one across the top of the radiator for now, although I'll probably, um, probably actually cable tie it up to this, which is the bonnet release cable. Um, but it's. Uh, that's sitting there quite happily and then that can just get cable tied in there okay right so that's now coming out there so what i need to do is disconnect the um oh, come on disconnect the um indicator repeater there it is put that on the bench and then I can 
set about separating these two halves and making a hole there. Okay, right. So this one here then needs to be connected to the back of the, the chassis socket when I fit it into that panel. So I'll just leave that there for now and then I'll cut that to the right length and get that uh, wired in. And then I need to put the curly wire on this and reassemble the trigger. Okay. Quite a lot of work this. Some of you might be thinking this is a bit unnecessary really. I could have just um, left the trigger remote control kind of coiled up with a cable tie and just sort of like wedged it somewhere in the bonnet and under the bonnet in the engine bay. Um, I didn't really want to do that. I just there's a lot of cable on that, and I just didn't want it to um, get caught up in any of the, the belt pulleys or fans or anything else. Um, I have seen other people just sort of tie theirs up out of the way, um, but um, no, I wasn't too keen on that. So, uh, so uh, that's why I'm going to all this extra effort to put a, uh, a socket. I'm going to put it into the air vent here so that the remote control can either be used in the car or standing at the side of the car. Okay, and I think if it's put, it, put here, this will be sufficiently sort of discreet that um, it won't draw too much attention to, to the fact that there's a socket on the side of the car. Okay, right, let's get this split into two and see if we can make a hole. dust cover on there as well so that's like that because it's black it's uh, not particularly uh, visible okay so, right just need to get a couple of little holes drilled for these screws here just to secure it in and then I can wire up the back of it let's just see if that make a hole in that. So that will allow access to the uh, to the terminals on the back of the socket. Right. Okay. Let's get this marked up. Drilled. So that's all insulated up. I had to just use more insulation tape because these, these heat shrink tubes just weren't large enough to go over all three pins on the back of the socket. Right, that's there, like that. Okay, that's all looking good. Indicator light, indicator repeater in there. Put that on there. Right, okay. Let's 
that's it. That's done. We won't need to remove that again. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is rewire the wired remote control using some coiled cable. Okay, so this is three core sort of mains cable, um, which I just thought would be a bit more suitable rather than a long length of straight cable. This just uh, keeps everything nice and neat and can then be extended out to go in through the window. Now, I bought this cable here, which is 13 amp mains cable and it's just too thick, okay? It's just far too thick. So I then bought some one amp, which is too thin. And finally, ended up with six amp, which is about the same thickness as the straight cable that I took off. Okay, so this is the one that I'm going to use. Uh, it's also just happens to be the longest one when stretched out, which is quite good. So it's about two meters when it's stretched completely out, um, and then about about half a meter probably when it's coiled up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is refit that into the uh, trigger module. Okay, so this, this uh, plastic housing here uh, with a couple of spade terminals on there. Get that connected onto here, and there's a grommet and various other sort of strain relief cradles and things like that. So I'll reconstruct that, and then I need to solder on this XLR connector. Okay, so this is quite a nice metal bodied, rugged metal bodied sort of connector here. Um, which does need actually soldering uh, onto the, the ends of the cable. Okay, so I'll do that. It's got a, like a grip thing inside and then a sort of rubber strain relief at the end. So it's, it's um, absolutely perfect for what I'm trying to do here. It's designed for use with microphones and things like that, but it doesn't matter. It's uh, not going to be high current, this, uh, this application. It's, it's literally just a switching uh, from one wire to uh, in or out. So when I looked at the wiring to this here, I found that uh, brown was the, the common, okay, so the brown wire was the, the, uh, the sort of the feed as such, and then there were two other wires in the standard cable, there was blue and black, okay, so brown was the, uh, the wire coming in, and then it was switched to blue for out and black for in. Okay, so um, so what I need to do is try and replicate that now because this is mains cable, UK mains. We've got a blue and a brown, but we've got a, an earth, uh, yellow and green stripy earth. So I'll keep blue and brown the same. So brown is the common, blue is out, and then instead of black, I'll use the, the the green and yellow earth cable for the in connection there. Okay, so that's in. Um, right, so I'll get that connected up with these crimp connectors here. And then what I need to do is solder this so that everything connects up correctly. Okay, so this will be plugged into the socket on the wing air vent. And I just need to make sure that all the all the wires remain in the same sort of position around the, the three pins. Have a look at this now this is actually a double pole switch but we only need to use one of the contacts inside the other one's just unused so i will put brown and there's the common and then blue is out and then yellow and green instead of black Now there is a 
strain relief sort of bridge that goes across here. So I'll get this relocated. ready now for the other half to go on. Okay, there we go, one rewired remote control. Okay, we need to put the XLR plug on the end, the other end of the cable. First, it's actually a really nice, tight fit. Actually, this this bit's rigid plastic, but this bit's a sort of firm rubber. I'll just push that through. That piece, I think. So look at this. I'm not sure if that needs to go on before or not. I'll put it on anyway. think so. It's just sort of like a gripper. As we tighten everything up it uh, will grip the cable. Okay right let's get this wired up now. Let's see that goes in from that end. It's got a little kind of clip, a little tiny barbed clip on it. So that doesn't need to go on in advance. We now need to solder that up. So we'll get the soldering arm plugged in, get that heating up. Right, okay, there we go, one metal XLR connector wired up, ready to plug into the socket on the wing air vent. Okay, I'm now going to test this out, see if it works. 
see if I've wired it up correctly. Right, let's get this, get this key into here. That's the winch enabled. So in, yeah, out, in. right, it's working. Okay, so that is the wired remote. Happy with that. Let's get that back on there. There we go, just to waterproof it. Okay, so we've got isolator switch wired remote sorted now i need to have a look at this fair lead and try and put the bumper surround back on Uh, the sensors are just not working at all. 